Hello, I'm Aisha Jafford, the evening host here on The Current, and I'm joined in the studio by the amazing Coin. Wow. Thank you so much for having us. Hello. Do you guys want to introduce like each and like, or I can introduce you. We've got Chase, Hi. we've got Joe, Ryan, and Matt all here in the studio. And they just performed this amazing session here. I'm very excited. You guys have been stepping in like first steps into some places like the Ryman and all of these beautiful venues. And we're here in real life. What does that feel like for you? Hmm. Um, well, it's happened so gradually, you know? I think we've been a band for almost 10 years now. So uh, there's some days you wake up and you're like, this is, how is this happening? And some days you're like, of course this is happening, you know? And, um, but it's, it's mostly how is this happening now? <laughs> so honestly, it's just taking it one day at a time and just really being happy to be here. That's it. Every day, literally someone's like, what's your favorite show? And like, this, the, all, we're so grateful for all of them. Yeah, truly. And that's true. Like 10 years as a band, that's a long time, which I, I like to always rewind because I know you guys came from all parts of the states, like Midwest, Southeast, Northeast, all together in Nashville. I know Belmont is in the mix yeah. and the hit makers come from Belmont. Uh, so I wanted to rewind a second and get your origin story. Like how did coin get coined? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, how far should we take it back? <laughs> oh, baby. Take it all the way. All right. So <laughs> Joseph was in a high school band. And his band was traveling through my hometown, which no one plays in my hometown, in West Virginia, in case you want to know it all. And uh, I heard his song on the local radio station on my way to college algebra. And I said, I'm going to go to that show. Never been to a show in my life in my hometown. Still haven't been. And um, went to the show alone. And I met Joseph outside of the venue. And we talked for a brief second about music or whatever. And um, that was that. And I never saw him again. And then two years later we happened to sit beside each other in Belmont in Nashville in music theory class on day one. Like yeah. truly that's like fate. And it, I knew who he was immediately. He didn't recognize me, but after a couple of weeks I worked up the nerve to finally ask him to um, write a song with me. And, uh, and then we were on the other side of us was this, was this girl uh, and she was friends of ours, and she overheard us uh, talking about starting a band. She's like, "Oh, I know the I know the drummer. You need a drummer. I know, I know the, the drummer. I know the drummer." <laughs> and she was right. He, he Ryan is the drummer. Yeah. He, he's the he's she, the perfect person. We didn't put I got up volunteered. We didn't put up <laughs> ads. We didn't do anything. We just happened to meet these people, and then Ryan and Matthew went like knew each other in high school, and then somehow there was another person that went to Belmont that joseph knew matthew before he knew ryan like this is yeah. the weird. weirdest tangled weird web shit man and weird stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah so we're yeah. here we're alive and yeah that pretty much fast forwards us to today yeah. <laughs> it's all connected it's such proof that everything is connected in that way it's every anytime there's ever been a web. doubt about the band or like what we're doing here like i just think about all the things that had to go right for us to be even standing in this room right now and that's like a perfect aisha <laughs> it's a perfect segue honestly because i was thinking about that you guys have like any other band like having a history of 10 years there's ebbs and flows right you've mm -hmm. got i know there were some things like a wavering basis you lost your first uh record deal and like the world was on fire around you but yeah. you still prevailed through that and i wonder like what uh, what kind of pushed you through or what was like the North Star to get you through all of that? Man. Uh, I mean, it's it's got to be the people that have supported us, honestly. I think these songs, I've just said this over and over on this tour, but these the songs literally mean nothing if people don't sing them and give them their own meaning. So uh, it's that. It's just knowing that getting on social media or showing up to whatever Omaha, Nebraska you know, on a Tuesday and seeing how much this music means to people and the kind of like joy and escape uh, that they're getting from it is like, it brings, brings us so much purpose. So that's always been my guiding light is kind of th the meaning that other people give it even beyond myself. Cause it's fun to kind of like, you know, have that catharsis by, you know, public journal, but it's a whole other thing when people can like, can also like benefit from that and provide their own story to it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's always been really, really great for us. But it, yeah, we've been so blessed to have people that believe in what we do. That's it. It's got to be an amazing feeling too to see many people sing those songs back to you. It's like bizarre. An the most ambiguous songs people are just singing. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, so you, you know, you prevailed, you've come through, you're here now, and now you have a number one song, Chapstick. You played your first late night show with Jimmy Kimmel. You've gotten the approval stamp from Sir... 
Elton John. <laughs> and so all these firsts, what is that experience like? I know we're kind of talking about this, these feelings and experiences, but I think they're important because they're, they're fresh. Yeah. They finally came around. No, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm I love that. Though. <laughs> yeah. Like it's about time. Uh, <laughs> like the most cocky answer ever. <laughs> I love it. Um, no, I think we, we never stopped. We never stopped believing. And it's kind of, it is kind of like we kind of finally came around because we haven't changed, you know? We are, somebody told me, or I think this is just what we kind of believe. It's this idea of just knowing yourself and, uh, embedding on yourself every time. And, uh, and eventually you're either you live long enough to be right or you die wrong. So <laughs> I, uh, I think that we've, uh, we've just slowly adapted and, and haven't quit. I think Paul McCartney said like, don't break the band up. That's it. You know, I think if you, yeah. if you do this long enough and, um, and you keep dreaming bigger. You find a way to dream bigger, even when the world is telling you like to scale back, roll back, do less production, write more niche songs, be truer to yourself, be honest, like whatever it may be. Like we found a way to like dream bigger and want to do more every single time. So I think that's it, that's always been it for me. Yeah, it, we we also internally have such a healthy competitive nature, and also on top of that, want to be so understood. And when people are like accepting, it's like, oh my God, we're finally understood. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, yeah. oh, they get it. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, but sweet. it was just time. That was yeah, that was, was just, a variable. Yeah. I think it was time. Yeah, I think I think this is exactly how it's just supposed like a to relationship happen. or a conversation. But also, I don't think it's never happens. You know what I mean? So I think we'll have you having this conversation in probably ten years. Like, can you believe? <laughs> uh, you know, you guys played on Mars for the first time, and then we'll be like, yeah, of course. Like, it was gonna happen. You know? Yeah, it just I mean, took time. <laughs> yeah, it just takes time to get there. You know, persistence is key. Yeah, I the think. casino in the moon it was amazing. You, how can you believe it? <laughs> we stayed at the hotel. It was yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, well, that is, you know, you're kind of just setting me up here because in the pandemic, you guys made 200 songs. Basically. So you were Maybe like more. using this creative outlet, right? You're getting it all out there. Do you feel like that experience, like all that creation together, like made you uh, more authentic to your sound than ever with this new album? I love that question. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what happened mm -hmm. in uh, the time. I think that in 2020, we were kind of like reborn as a band as individuals we got to like make up for so much lost time that we haven't had at home and uh together even though we've been physically together like we weren't emotionally together you know and kind of getting back to that mindset of what was it like at belmont in that dorm room dorm room and uh what's it like what do i want to say what, why do i care about what i want to say what do i care about these people what do i care about my family you know what do i care about the world and collective crisis and just like all these like questions that i've maybe kind of ignored because of the the machine just couldn't stop, you know? And um, I think it took that year specifically writing all the songs. We just looked and we said, what's the only things that have ever like pushed our band forward and like reached more people and brought us purpose? We're like, it's not music videos. It's like, those are fun. Those are like fun accessories to the, to the equation. But the only two things that have ever like pushed us forward and given us purpose are playing live music and writing songs. And so we said, we can't do one of those things. So we're going to write as many songs as we can possibly make. And maybe we're just trying to pretend we had any control over anything for that year. <laughs> but uh, we did it. And we, the byproduct was we were just trying to stay busy, you know, just trying not to go insane. But we actually became so much closer and like we understood ourselves so much more. And there's and specifically this is like EP series called Rainbow Mixtape where we like, uh, experiments with all different kinds of genres and sounds it, it's stuff that we like pent up inspiration over the years and stuff that would have worked its way into music coin music over time that in places it shouldn't have been you know what i mean but being like what if we made like a, a fully like a, a like a joy division song we're like we we could but it just it would end up like these little pixels in places that just didn't belong so we were able to like fully get the work these things out and kind of like try on these clothes fully and um that really allowed us to to figure out who we are, but mostly important, most importantly, I think who we're not. And so coming forward to Uncanny Valley, we're starting that November, 2020. Um, we were really able to have this like rubric of like, we know exactly who we're not. We don't know exactly who we are. And I think that's like the undying question for the rest of our lives. But it was, uh, it was a really, really valuable tool <laughs> to know exactly where we're comfortable going and when we're comfortable not going. Right, and who we are is many things. So you got yeah. to explore yeah. that, yeah. which is mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And and in a way, that's kind of a, uh, something of a benefit for that time to kind of focus and yeah. 
explore, which is great. Yeah. So Uncanny, Uncanny Valley is out now. It and is. I heard that there's like kind of a documentary aspect that kind of started this idea of looking at what is realness, what is humanness through like an AI perspective. That's kind of all where it started with AlphaGo yeah. and the documentary. So what would you say is the thesis statement of Uncanny Valley? I think it's a question because I don't think that we set out to say anything because I don't think it's our business to answer these questions. So it's not like the dangers of artificial intelligence. I, I think it's just, it's more so what is anything, you know what I mean? What does it mean to be human mostly? And, um, that question is again, an undying one. I feel like something we'll spend the rest of our lives kind of calculating, but this idea that like if science or technology wanted to mimic human chemistry at the highest level, of course we will, you know, we'll get to that. So it, then it becomes, what is that X factor? What is that variable, that, that intangible that we know we can feel what it means to be human. But eventually I think those lines will be so blurry that we won't know. So I think it's, it's kind of this beautiful idea of like, it, gives, it gave us this cool viewpoint this objective way to write from but Like, what was it like to like hold someone's hand for the first time? Or what was it like to, to experience all these real life experiences for the first time, heartbreak, loss, um, love, or, you know, the lack thereof, whatever it may be. Um, it kind of gave us this kind of literary device to, to be able to write from a more objective standpoint, but ultimately all we, all we are is a collection of our own experiences. So the album just became like, we thought we were writing from this like really sci-fi, uh, ex machina standpoint. And then by the end of it, we're like, oh no, this is just about me. Like <laughs> we literally just wrote about ourselves for like 75 <laughs> minutes. So yeah, it was, it, it was a great experience and I wouldn't trade this album for literally anything. I think it's the most coin thing we've ever done, regardless of anybody saying like, oh, so I wish they didn't make, I wish they made music that sounded like this or whatever. It's like, this is the most coin thing we could have done because we've never been satisfied with being static. Um, we've always wanted to push forward. So I think that's us. Yeah. And you can hear that in the album too. But I do have to point out, you use some AI, right? In the album? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so write some lyrics, chapstick. Oh boy. <laughs> that is a word salad. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, there's some other parts. Like we use some, some really fun, like Google tools, uh, to write some poetry, uh, and then some really cool stuff in a few songs to just create a really fun, some soundscapes that there's no way we could have ever created on our own probably. Yeah. 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 Well, Chapstick, you mentioned, mm -hmm. and that's like this stream of consciousness. Yeah. And it's, you know, you kind of took that idea. How did you use uh, al algorithms of intuition yeah, on that song? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the first song. Ryan sent me that documentary, AlphaGo. Watch it on YouTube, on my drive. My car drove itself. It was like the most, like it was setting me up. You know what I mean? Like it was all setting me up for this moment where uh, I was watching this documentary about AI while my car was driving itself. <laughs> and then I got to this, our producer's house who... I just met that day and he mentioned he had just seen the documentary too the night before. Like again, more cosmic coincidences. And uh, we kind of just bonded over and talked about how weird and strange but inspiring it all is. And we're like, well, what's it, what would it be like if, you know, a robot or AI like had a first kiss? Which, cause inevitably, you know, that'll be something I feel like that will happen if you're watching in the future. Hello. <laughs> um, and, uh, we and he just kind of left <laughs> he just left and he's like this guy's crazy and um so then i just got on the mic and i was like what, what would it be like if we inputted you know those like uh <laughs> those those bots on twitter that they feed like hours of uh, law and order and they ask it to make its own script have you seen this mm, well no, not yet okay <laughs> but just, I'm gonna, you, you give it hours you give it hours of anything and it, and it and it creates its own script of whatever you know oh, a new episode amazing. of seinfeld or something and uh and so we thought, like, what if we were the engine, you know? What if we fed ourselves so much Rolling Stones, so much Gorillas, so much Beck, so much Cake, and just all this music that we loved and just said, these are the parameters, we're going to make music out of, out of this. And, like, maximal influence and just, like, minimal output. And, um, <laughs> and then I just got on the microphone and just pretended like I was just putting words together that were like contrasting and this all just stream of consciousness, especially the first verse and first chorus are completely one take, just like window inside of my brain. Yeah. And you hear people 
singing that back at it's you. It's bizarre <laughs> and disorienting. No that's one knows awesome. what he's talking about. N- I, not <laughs> even me. And, and and that's the beauty of it all. But someone takes an interpretation, right? And they feel mm-hmm. that yeah. and they bring it back, which is really special. It really is. I know. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah. So now that I'm singing those lyrics, I'm like, yeah, these mean something. And I'm like, no, they don't. But Sharp that's the beauty shooter. is that they don't mean anything. We're all in there. The, the meaning is that we're together. That's yeah. It. I love that because yeah. togetherness is so important right now. Right now, especially. We got to talk about Brad Pitt real quick as well <laughs> because I heard a secondary option was Tom Brady, but Brad Pitt, you know, <laughs> he's a beaut. I mean, of course, yeah. they're both beauts. Um, why Brad Pitt? I know you've been asked this before, but I'm curious. You want to go for it, Ryan? I mean, he, he sort of encapsulates youth and also longevity. Um, so eternal youth. Yeah. If you put those thoughts together. <laughs> um, and he's stayed relevant. And eternal relevance was something that we talked about. We we had an eternal relevance contract that we made for a, a photo shoot one time. You couldn't even see what it said, but it, it was we know. somehow... We, know. we, we knew, knew it was there it's and Chase was contract. signing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's like something that we're all kind of in the weeds about. Like, I feel like millennials especially, like we're obsessed with this idea. I feel like I see so many TikTok videos about like, what do I wear? How do I stay relevant? How do I stay normal? And it's like, like I think true relevance and true youth is found. It's like a mindset, you know? I don't think that we, just because you, you miss the details doesn't mean that you don't own youth. And I think that's this interesting idea about somebody like Brad Pitt is like, or James Dean, you know, it, it could be anyone like that. It's just a cultural trope to kind of, almost brush it all under together it's like this person that's effortlessly gracefully aging you know yeah. not worried about relevance but create they're creating culture and um rather than trying to move with it you know they are they are it so I Authenci- authenticity right like yeah that's, that's you know, timeless right that's yeah, a good that's way timeless. to say it yeah, yeah. you exactly. risk like the uh you risk the tactility of identity um for optimization you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's where we're at. It's like, we just, we want to get better, but it's like, what about right now? Yeah. Oh, that's so true. And that's I like what, that. That's, that's nice. great. That's a great thing to chew on. I think everybody needs to hear that. They, yeah, yeah. The whole album explores that idea of like optimization is the end of individuality as well. So it's a, that's good, Ryan. I like that. Tactility. That's good. I have a silly question to kind of wrap up. I heard something about <laughs> coin tattoos popping up. Oh. Yeah. What's the best one you've seen? You know, there's so many beautiful, <laughs> so many beautiful, meaningful ones, and um, uh, but the other night in Salt Lake, which is such a beautiful place and with such amazing people, um, someone had been to their first coin show ever, and they stayed after the show pretty late, and I eventually came out outside of the bus, and they were there, and um, they handled me handed me a pickleball paddle. All right. Which I appreciate it. Gave us hours of entertainment. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, um, but they asked me to write on their arm, which I never do. Like, I never do. I just, on principle, I was just like, you know what? No, like, if you have a piece of paper, it's fine. But I did. I don't know why I did. I just felt like this person was so pure and loving. And, and I wrote my name and then wrote, he said, wrote my, write your name and write the date because this is the best day of my life and I want to remember it for the rest of my life. Oh. And I don't even know. Maybe it's just the first thing that popped in my mind. But I was like, I don't even care. All other coin tattoos. This isn't even a coin tattoo. This is a life tattoo. So yeah. I think uh, this is a chase tattoo. No, it's not about me. <laughs> no, it's I'm about joking. this person. I'm, I'm just. I just happen to be the catalyst. <laughs> I, know. I I love it though. It made me. It made me so happy to think that like somebody, we were the like yeah. <laughs> the the thing that gave someone a, such a cool experience that they want to remember joy. It forever. Joy. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. You. yeah. What, is there anything else you guys would want to share before I let you go here? No, this is so amazing. I, we, five more albums yeah. coming out <laughs> next month. Yes. <laughs> no, this station's so great. I can't thank you guys enough for playing our music. Uh, we've heard about the current since we were literally like children, and I think it's the coolest thing that we're standing here right now. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank, thank you, so you guys. Much. Thank you so much for being here. Again, Coin in the Studio, their new album, Uncanny Valley, is out now. <laughs>